Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Shut Up and Read. Today I'll be doing the best books that I read in 2018. This is one of my favorite videos to do just because I can finally compile a list of 10 books that I really, really enjoyed this past year and just gush about them and share them all with you guys. I did the exact same video last year, so I will link that above in case you want to check out the best books that I read in 2017. But anyways, let's just get right into the video. Also, just letting you guys know that the list is not in any particular order. It's just a list of books that I really, really enjoyed. I don't have a particular order in terms of which one I like the most, etc. The first book that I want to talk about is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I actually did a book review on this already, so I'll link that video above in case you want to check that out. So a quick short summary in terms of what this book is about. It follows a girl called Miriam. She is a daughter of a moneylender, and for some whatever reason, she basically takes up the family business as the moneylender for her town. And as she continues the business, her confidence in it grows and it's to the point that she was now able to utter the words I can turn silver into gold and then from that point on these fae like creatures called the Starks appeared the line that she said really drew the Starks attention that the Stark King himself actually issued a bunch of challenges for her to complete and just to basically see if she can back her words with her actions and as the book continues a lot of POVs are introduced and the fate of the kingdom becomes more and more precarious and everyone is trying to save their kingdom so this book is just so so good there's a lot of intricate layers it's kind of like peeling an onion as you get to another layer, another layer appears, and there's just a lot of hidden depths and complexity in this book. That being said though, it does take some time for everything to come together because it's just so complex, like the story is just very intricate. So while I absolutely love this book, I do have to admit and say that in the beginning, I would say the first half of the book almost, does take quite some time for the reader, like for me, to really get into it because there's just so much stuff, so much elements being introduced into the story that it really does take some time for you to get into the story because of that. But the writing is very breathtaking and the story does come together very, very beautifully. So it's definitely a book where you kind of really have to be patient and absorb everything for you to really grasp the whole beautiful world that Naomi created. So I would definitely recommend this book if you enjoy elements such as fairy tales, folklores, and just books that are written very beautifully. If you like books that are very action-oriented, then this book probably isn't for you. But if you enjoy what I said previously, then I think this book would be really great. The second book that I want to discuss is actually a duology, and I've mentioned this already a few times, and that is Strange a Dreamer series by Lainey Taylor. I actually discussed this series a little bit more in detail in my books I read video for November, so I'll link that above in case you want to check that out. So a quick short summary in terms of what the series is about, follow the librarian called Lazo Strange. He grew up completely enamored with this forgotten city of Weep, very fascinated by it completely. And for the past 200 years, it had basically been forgotten. No one at this point really believes that it exists anymore. And because of his love for this forgotten city, he spent his entire life researching and dedicating every aspect of it to kind of knowing and understanding the city a little bit more and finding out why it disappeared. And then one day a group appears and he now has the opportunity to go to Weep and find out what happened 200 years ago. And this book is just so beautifully written. For me, I absolutely loved everything about the books. I really like the characters. I like Laszlo a lot. He's definitely my favorite character. The plot, the world that Lainey created was just so beautiful, so intricate. It's, everything was just very complex and it all came together very seamlessly. So in terms of the difference between the two books, I would say that Stranger Dreamer was more of a slow burn for me. I think at that point I was a little bit hesitant about going into the books just because I didn't like her previous trilogy a lot or at all actually I DNF'd it, but <laughs> give me another try. Um, but anyway, so I was a little bit hesitant about it and so I think that's why subconsciously I was trying to read it a little bit slower and just get myself into this world that Lainey created because it's just so different and so intricate and complex. But for Muse of Nightmares though, I basically devoured the book. I mean, at that point, I kind of knew the magic, the world that she created, and I just want to know what happened next. So that was basically the difference between the two, but I love them both so, so much. The next book that I want to discuss is Room by Emma Donahue. So this book is told in the perspective of a five-year-old. His name is Jack, and he has been living in this one little room his entire life with his mother. His mother was kidnapped about seven years ago and was basically held captive in this room for this entire time. And despite her captivity, Activity there, she still managed to make Jack's life, his entire five years, to be as wonderful as it could possibly be. And then one day she devises this plan, this escape plan, but the thing is she really had to rely on Jack to be the one to fulfill it. So this book is all about bravery, finding courage, 
resilience and love so i love this book so so much i listened to an audiobook and the narrator did such a good job with it the one unique thing that i really liked about this book that also i think is the driving point and also another reason why i think a lot of people didn't like this book for those who didn't like this book is that it's told in a five-year-old's perspective so there is this sense of eeriness and innocence to everything that he says because he is five years old, he has no experience with the outside world, and a lot of the things that he says and the things that he does just doesn't seem, it just seems so innocent, I guess is what it is. And because of that, a lot of the darker elements in the book didn't really seem as dark because it was told in the perspective of a five-year-old. So I actually really enjoy that aspect because it made things so much more, I don't know, vivid, I guess, for me, just because I never really thought about understanding a lot of the concepts in the mind of a five-year-old so i thought that element was done really well my favorite part though was definitely the bond between jack and his mother their bond was just so absolute their love for each other was so strong it's like everything they do is for each other essentially and when he was going through this escape plan there were so many times when he was just so insecure so afraid and he really had to remember to be brave and to have courage to follow through with the escape plan that his mom created and I loved everything about that. So if you haven't read this book yet, I definitely recommend you to go check it out because it was so so good. The next book that I want to discuss is The Lost Queen by Signe Pike. So this book is set in 6th century Scotland and it basically follows a twin sister of the man who later inspires The Legend of Merlin. And the book just simply follows her life from when she's a young girl to when she becomes a grown woman. It has tons of action and romance and this book was so good. After I finished it, I was like, where is the rest? But this book just came out in September, so I have quite some time before the second and the third book comes out because this is a trilogy. So I do have to say that from the beginning, it does start off quite slow, but it does pick up. And by that point, I was absolutely in love with this book. My favorite part in this book was definitely the characters. I love Langareth. She is the twin sister, as well as Lilo Ken. He is the twin brother. They're twin bond is just so so strong and it's so strong that even when they're far apart from each other they can tell and sense when someone else is being hurt or etc. The romance in this book is also amazing it's just so sizzling there's two very very strong contenders and I can't figure out who I like most to be honest because they're both so good in their different ways. I also love how the author did such a great job of the history and the details and everything about this book was just so beautifully written and this is considered as a historical fiction, but I would say it's kind of like a- there's definitely some fantasy elements in it as well. I also discussed this book a little bit more in detail in my books I read video for September, so I'll link that above in case you want to check that out. So yeah, if you're looking for a great historical fiction slash fantasy slash romance book that's set in 6th century Scotland, then this book is for you. The next book that I want to share is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. So obviously this book follows a girl called Eleanor who is completely fine. I want to say she's around middle age, like in her 30s or something like that. I don't really remember because I read this book a while ago. Something like that. And she lives her life very regulated. She does the exact same thing at the exact same time every single day of the week. And then one day she meets this really messy, unkempt IT guy who works in the same office as her called Raymond. And from there, her life changes. And the book just really follows her life after meeting this Raymond guy. And this is just a really great feel-good kind of book. So obviously, I think this book was amazing. I mean, this book is on this list for a reason here. I love the author's writing style. It's so clear and it's so easy to understand and everything that she's trying to portray and I really really like that and because the writing is just so clear it was so easy for me to fall in love with the story as well as the characters I love Eleanor and Raymond like those two were just great characters and I love how the author did such a good job of portraying her gradual change from when she, in the beginning she's very regulated kind of socially awkward very socially awkward actually and then as the book continues she's starting to understand more and more about the society around her and becoming more comfortable with the people around her as well. So this book is actually going to be made into a movie. I think it's being directed by Reese Witherspoon and I am so excited for that. Then the next book that I want to share is actually a series and that is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Myers. I actually mentioned this already in my favorite YA series video so I'll link that above in case you want to check that out or down below depending on the space of the cards. So the story essentially centers around a girl called Cinder. She is a cyborg as well as a talented mechanic who lives in New Beijing and due to circumstances her life suddenly becomes intertwined with this guy, this prince called Prince Kai and now she basically finds herself in the middle of this political struggle between a 
evil fairy-like queen as well as this dangerous temptation. And as the books continue, there are new characters and new elements introduced in every single book and they're all basically fairy tale retellings that are all introduced somehow and somehow everything is just interwoven into this main story and I love the series so much. What really struck out to me though is the fact that every single book is basically a separate retelling but somehow Marissa Meyer did such a good job with creating that and mixing that and interweaving all of that into one cohesive storyline like that for me is just really really great I just can't imagine ever doing that myself to be honest my favorite part though definitely were the characters I loved every single character I mean I like Cinder the best probably because she's like the main character but the thing is every book really introduces new characters who are like the main character in each book so there's really no like main main character but I think Cinder for the whole series is supposed to be like the ultimate main character if that makes any sense. <laughs> but I just liked how all the characters played a very integral part in the overall grand scheme of things and that made things very enjoyable for me. Another thing that I really like with the series is it basically has everything. There's like sci-fi, magic, action, romance, and a lot of adventure. So if you're looking for any of those five type of topics, genres, then this book series is for you. Then the next book that I want to discuss is also another series and I actually mentioned this already in my favorite YA series so again I will leave that above or below depending on the cards I have left in this video but that is the Shadow Me series by Tahara Mafi. It follows a girl called Juliet who has basically been locked up for about a year now because of her fatal touch. For some whatever reason when she touches someone skin to skin they die. And then one day the reestablishment decides to free her and now she has this choice to become either a weapon or a warrior. And the rest of this series just really follows her journey as she learns to really just accept herself for who she is and this series was so good I mean it's so good that the author created or is writing another like continuation trilogy which I am really excited for so again I do have to say that I feel like this is not the first time this is like for most of the books already that the beginning starts off slow so maybe that is a thing books that start off slow might become your favorite book in the future or my favorite book in the future because a lot of the books on here now that I'm thinking about that I've set the statement the book starts off slow but then I, I start to love it or I end up loving it so I think that's that's a thing now guys so as I stated the book does start off quite slow and the main reason why I continue with it was not because of Juliet honestly I didn't even like her for the most part I didn't like her until the third book of the series the reason why I continue with it was because I really fell in love with Warner, Kenji, and James like those three characters were the sole reason why I continued with the series the plot was also another reason why I continued with it and why I fell in love with the series so much there's just so much romance so much action and so much adventure going on that I really really enjoyed it so I would say that the main main reason why I love the series so much is because of those three characters Kenji, James, and Warner like those three Oh my god, if something happens to them in the continuation trilogy, I'm gonna be so sad and I will not pick up the rest of the books because that's how much I love them for who they are versus Juliet, even though she's a main character, so... But that's the reason why this series is on this list. The next book that I want to share is a book that I absolutely love and that is The Great Alone by Chris and Hannah. I already did a book review on it so I'll link that above or down below for you guys to check it out. It's set in Alaska in the 1970s and it follows a girl called Lenny and her family after they're uprooted from their home to go to Alaska for a fresh start. And honestly the idea of a fresh start came from her father who is a prisoner of war from the Vietnam War and after he came back from the war he became this like very violent volatile man. And the book just really discusses the love for one's family, human resilience, and just surviving in this terrible cold weather basically. So I do have to say that Chris and Hannah's books are not necessarily the most complex in their premise. I mean this book just seems very straightforward. It's about a girl going to Alaska with her family trying to survive with this like guy, this dad basically who is not the most great dad in the world actually and it's just about survival essentially but somehow Chris and Hannah does such a good job of bringing everything to life. I mean she brings the characters to life so well the environment that they're in. I mean, after reading this book, I was like, I want to go to Alaska. I mean, I really want to go check that out for myself. Not in the winter though, because you know, some of the stuff that she depicted, I was like, oh, no, nope, way too cold for me. I like my stuff to be warm. I don't know why I live in New York, but because <laughs> winter days are no joke here. Imagine like me being in Alaska in the winter. Oh my God. But anyways, like after that, a lot of the stuff that she writes is just so vivid and it just really, really comes to life. So her writing, I don't know, her way of storytelling is just so amazing, I think. It's fantastic, and that's why I love her books so much. I also personally really enjoy books that span over decades, and this book, I think, spans over, like, 20 or 30 years. I don't really remember exactly, but it does span for... a 
quite a number of years and I really really like that because it allows the characters to really grow even more and you really become absorbed with their personality, their characteristics, you know like the relationship that they develop etc and you just kind of fall in love with everyone in the book and that's basically what happened to me. I fell in love with the characters, I fell in love with the environment, everything about it was just so richly done. So there's a reason why all of her books are just so so popular so if you haven't read this one go check it out. The next book that I want to discuss is one that I've discussed way too many times now. I literally just talked about it in my best of movies that I watched in 2018 and that is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So the book just basically follows a girl called Star who witnesses the fatal shooting of her best friend Khalil by a cop and the book just focuses on the aftermath of that and this book is just so powerfully written. It's a very simple book in terms of the writing style but the author did such a good job of portraying everything and just really allowing you to absorb and understand like the police brutality and all that stuff and honestly this book is just such a powerful message if you haven't read it already if you haven't watched the movie already I really really recommend you to go check it out but this book was so good I mean when I finished reading it I was like oh my god and I immediately tried to get everyone else to read it I gave it to my co-worker she returned it to me after like two weeks and it was like I didn't get a chance to read it and then I gave it to my roommate who actually has the book right now don't know where it is so I didn't ask her if she has picked it up yet or something like that because um I told her about this like a month ago so we'll see how that goes but this book is so so good if you haven't read it already I don't really know where you've been <laughs> clearly living under a rock I believe so go check it out then the final book that I want to share is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan I did a book review on it way back when so I will link that above for you to check it out this is a magical realism novel of falls a girl called Lee whose mother recently committed suicide and now she believes that her mother has turned into this bird and because of that she decides to go to Taiwan to meet her maternal grandparents for the first time to basically find that bird and the book just really touches upon family secrets, love, and some ghostly encounters as well. This was such a beautifully written novel about grief, despair, and hope and honestly I loved it so much. I think the author did such a good job of weaving magical elements with reality. One of my favorite parts was definitely the character Lee. I loved how the author did such a good job of portraying her struggles with dealing with her mother's death. The other part that I really liked was the fact that this book took place in Taiwan because that is where my grandparents are from and where my parents are from as well. So I have a lot of connections with Taiwan and a lot of the elements elements in this book, a lot of the places that were mentioned, I was like, yes, I have been there. So it creates such a vivid imagination on my end because I can actually picture everything so clearly. So I really, really like that. I don't really know that many books that actually has Taiwan as the background or like the setting. So I really, really enjoy that aspect. So overall, this book was just so good. If you enjoy lyrical and beautiful writing, then I definitely recommend this one. So anyway, that is it. These are the top 10 books that I read in 2018. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books, if you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, let me know all down below. But as always, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!